My name is Chris Condon. And I'm Jacob Phillips. And this is Forbidden Planet TV. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. And today I'm joined by the mighty team of Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips. How are you, gents? Well, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Well, I'm very well indeed, enjoying the uh, the brutally hot weather here in the UK, you know. So, uh, but it, it, it's, 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 it, I guess it's the uh, it's the uh, silver lining in that cloud. It's perfectly temperate and nice today, so that's all good. Thank you very much for uh, for joining me because we're here to talk about um, your sequel, if you will, prequel actually, uh, the Enfield Gang Massacre, which mm-hmm. is the uh, the prequel to your very successful and much loved. Um, image series that texas blood so uh could we just take a step back and could we could you tell me a bit about how you feel about the response to that texas blood and uh and what the genesis of uh enfield gang massacre was well i for me i mean i i I, i'm still blown away by you know we get a lot of i mean we we write a book that or i write a book Jake, jake draws the book but we create a book that's like very personal to us both you know it, it's very it's very um grounded and and we try to uh pump as much of, of our own uh experience and, and emotion into the book and to find that people are a reading the book and enjoying the book is one thing but then to to have them be having an emotional experience while reading the book is another thing and we do get a, a lot of emails from people telling us that you know th- th- they've never had an emotional reaction you know for example crying while reading a book but they've, they've, they've cried while reading you know a, one of our issues and, and or they've never had uh never been, you know found a book that suspenseful before and it, you know so it's w- when people tell us something like that i mean it just it means so much to me personally because i mean you know we set out to write or set out to create a book that that uh has has that impact but you, you never know if it's going to work and a lot of times you don't even know if it's working because you know it, there is this sort of silence when a book comes out you know you don't you don't necessarily know what people think um and then you start getting these emails or messages on instagram twitter um and and to know that that people are reading your book and and uh, it's really hitting them on the level that we wanted to hit them uh it's just something special um but I, I'll, I'll let Jake go, and then I think he he has a good explanation of where Enfield Gang came from. Hmm. Um, yeah, like yeah, like Chris was saying, I think the response has been like overwhelming at times. I think because yeah, like you, there's a specific scenes as well. Um, you, know, you when I get the script in, I'm like, oh wow, you know, I hope I can do this justice. Um, and then you know, when you start getting the emails and the tweets or whatever um saying like, oh yeah that scene like i can't believe it. and like, oh yes okay like we did it you know like we actually you know like we managed to put across what it was we we're trying to put across uh or get yeah get that reaction so that's always great like i never really it never really occurred to me that people would like email in or whatever you know like they're, they're that enthusiastic about it which is really mm-hmm. nice like i would never think to email someone really like unless it was like incredible so like yeah like when when people actually reach out and and make the effort to let you know how they feel about it it's just yeah it's great um but yeah in terms of uh the Enfield gang massacre in i can't remember what issue it was but i think it was in the second arc of texas blood we in the backup pages we had an article which featured the gang um and I remember I was doing the you know doing the design for it and the illustration. I said I just messaged Chris and I was like, we're we gonna we're we gonna see more of this. Like is this gonna be is this gonna come back? Because this is pretty cool. And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh we could. Um and that was what, like two years ago at least, I think. Yeah. Probably. Um, and now here we are doing it. So it's just like doing stuff like that is really cool because it's like we have the freedom of image to sort of to be able to do stuff like that. Like, oh, that'd be a cool idea. Let's just do it. You know, like mm-hmm. there's no, there's not really any pitching at this for this, and 
you know, we don't have any sort of creative editorial notes on that kind of thing. So it's like, oh, you want to do it? Yeah, sure. Like, this will be cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like being able to sort of follow that thread is like such a cool thing to be able to do. I mean, it strikes me that one of the great validators of creative success is when you get to the point where you can explore the mythology of the universe you've created yourselves and you've got the, you know, you have the um, the gift of being able to do that. That must be an amazing place to be as a creator, I, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've always done it as well, like, even if it's just through, like, little bits or, like, merch or whatever, we love building that world out like we've got like a baseball team with you know with the t-shirts and stuff like that it's not even featured in the book but it's just like a cool thing like it's all like what would i what like what do i think is cool that other people would do in their book or like in terms of like yeah like merch something like that like what would i buy that isn't mm -hmm. just like the logo on the on the front of a t-shirt yeah. um so doing that kind of th stuff is really cool and like for the the latest arc we did um like a limited run of the the RQK masks. Like me and my girlfriend sat making them like in front of the TV for like two weeks, um, just because it was like that'd be such a cool thing to do. You know, we made like twenty of them, I think. But it's like, um, yeah, just having it, like it's just for us, really. Like, oh, that's that's just a cool thing that we can do. So let's just do it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I guess it's the 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 Tarantino red apples of it all, if you will. You know, it's that feeling being able to play around and experiment. I, I, I know if I was, if I was, if I had the ability to do what you guys do, which I do not, I think one of the things <laughs> would be giving me great pleasure would be, would be exactly what you just said, mm. you know what I mean? Because uh, it's such, because it's kind of an endless vista, isn't it? You can do what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, like Jake was saying, I mean, we're, we're very fortunate that, that we have a, a book at image and it, it was our, both of our first books <laughs> at image. And we're on technically the fourth volume, if you want to consider an show game masker part of that Texas blood. Um, it, it's, it's really, it, you know, like I said, we're, we're fortunate to be able to create in the way that we're able to create where, like he said, we have no overhead. We, we have nobody looming over us, telling us we have to do this, that, the other thing. Um, the only notes that we get from image are if I misspell something and, you know, in the letter <laughs> or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's a joy to be able to explore the universe uh, that we've created and, and to sort of, you know, plant seeds here and there, like the Enfield Gang Massacre in that article, which is an idea that I've had since like 2013. Um, and then, you know, actually be able to expand upon it now and, you know, finally figure out the details of what exactly happened. And I'm actually in the back matter for Enfield. I'm, I'm doing it. An, an interesting thing maybe i don't know if it's gonna work or not but um doing a, a retrospective article looking back at the infield gang massacre um simultaneously so it, it's it's going to be you're looking at what happened and then there's a going to be an article talking about what they they believe happened at the infield gang massacre um and th so that's that's something that i think is a big part of Texas history, American history in a lot of ways is the victors, right? The history, right? Yeah, so it's, right. you don't know exactly what was happening. And we're, you know, we're slowly getting details from things like, for example, um, I didn't know about what happened in Tulsa until I watched the Watchmen TV show on HBO. You know, so that's a piece of American history that was hidden from me um, because it wasn't in the history books and it should have been. And so that that's one of the, the ideas that we're playing with with the Anfield Game Master is is this idea of a historical event that has been framed in a certain way by the victors. Um, so that's it's an interesting thing to be able to play with, and and again, we're we're just very lucky and fortunate to be able to to do that. Um, Guys, going to take get you to take a, a step back because that's that, that's a bunch of very interesting points, and of course, you know. Uh, one of the first major exponents of of, of that uh, artful retelling of history is all tied in with British imperialism, right? You know, and there's scores of stuff that that led to the formation of the British Empire and the strength of the British Empire 200 years ago. That's just absolutely been, you know, absolutely buried in no history books whatsoever that involve, you know, mass atrocities and what have you. 
Um, and I think it's such an it's such a, the artful uh, telling of history by the victors is such an interesting concept. But for those who haven't read uh, any of that Texas Blood yet. Could you give me a little introduction for them as to, to what the concept, what the story is? Um, well, if I was to be talking about that Texas blood, the, 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 the very simple way that I describe that Texas blood is that it's it's about a fictional West Texas County and the bad stuff that happens in it. Um, and what the Enfield Gang Massacre is, is the the origin of that county. Yeah. Um, so we, we really experience the birth of that county and how it is birthed in violence and bloodshed. Um, and that's, it, which leads into the bad stuff that ends up happening later on in our series. Um, so th that that's really how I would describe it. I don't know if Jake would describe it in other terms, but. No, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think that's exactly right. What, what was it that, what was it that drew you to Texas for, for being the locale, the fulcrum of the story in the first place, Chris? Uh, you know, growing up in America, Texas is sort of this mythological place. You know, it's it's cowboys and Indians. It's, you know, the, the anything goes, you know, everybody, you know, it's like the, the I mean, we used this in the first issue of the Texas Blood. Um, and it's it's actually the Texas tourist uh, quote. If you buy a pamphlet about Texas, this is what it's going to say in it, which is it's like another country. And it really does feel that way. And I, I, I've always been attracted to, you know, I love Westerns. I love, you know, that sort of that American mythology of Westerns. And so I was always just attracted to Texas and, and just feel like there's, there's so much that you can play with in terms of story and character. And there's so many interesting characters there. Um, you know, the, especially in rural Texas where, where it's all sort of, separated from the cities so you're seeing people in the in their sort of isolated cocoons and you know how, how they interact with the world is different than how somebody where i live in new jersey interacts with the world um so I, and so their story is going to be completely different than my my story or another person's story where i live um so i was just always been attracted to that world and try to explore that world and Again, I'm not I'm not from Texas. And so exploring that world is is an investigation in a lot of ways of, you know, what those people are like. And, and you know, I, I don't necessarily politically agree with those people. And so that's another exploration that I'm you know going through is how, how do I identify with this person that I, you know, if I'm just tweeting back and forth with them, I wouldn't agree with him at all. But like, if I was to sit down with them and have dinner, I'm sure that there would be a lot of things that we would agree on and that we, we would enjoy about each other. And so that that's definitely part of, of the book as well and, and writing the book and, and the joy of writing that book. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's, you know, I, I ended up becoming friends with uh, some people from Texas and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to visit Texas fairly frequently. Jacob was able to visit as well. Um and, you know, through them, I was able to really get to know Texas. And it wasn't just in in writing a story. It was actually experiencing Texas and talking to them about Texas and what their life is like in Texas. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's it's a very much just a, an investigation on our part, I think, of what this place is and and who the people inhabit it are. Yeah, that 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 is that is really interesting. You you mentioned about your process about visiting Texas. What parts of the state did you both actually go to? Um, well, I mean, we both went to West Texas. So uh, West Texas is where our story is set. Um, yeah. Where our fictional county is is where about three or four counties are in West Texas. So it's Brewster County, Presidio County, Jeff Davis County. Um, I, there's another one I'm forgetting. <laughs> uh, forgive me, but uh, it, it's this it's this area around Marfa, Texas. It's a desert on the border of Mexico, um, and we both were out there together. Um, I I visited across Texas, and and West Texas is not like any other spot in Texas. Um, it's it's a very different land. It's a very different feel from everything else. Um, and Jake, you know, coming from from the UK and visiting, I mean, you might have a different perspective on that too. Um, you know, yeah. being, being in uh, Austin and then going to, you know, West Texas. Yeah. We, well, we started, so we flew to Austin and then drove 
straight out again. So I didn't yeah. actually, and so I didn't get to go to Austin until right at the end of the trip. So by the time I got there, Austin was quite underwhelming because it's so much more like what I'm used to. Yeah. Whereas like, yeah, I think being in West Texas and, and being in the desert and, you know, we sort of traveled around a bit over there and it's just like, yeah, it's a completely different world. Whereas like Austin, I was like, oh, this is like a cool city, but it's just, it's a, you know, it's a metropolitan city. Um, I've seen these before. Whereas yeah. like, yeah, like, prop, like being out in the middle of nowhere in these little towns is just like something that I've never experienced before. And the only thing I regret is that I didn't go sooner like in the process of making these books like I didn't go until I think we'd finished the second arc already by the time I got to visit it was yeah it was before the third arc yeah so I was drawing a lot of it just based off like google and films and yeah you know what Chris has told me and um so it was great to get to experience it like firsthand and take some photos and walk around and do all that stuff and like soak it in and actually experience it and hopefully the the like visuals of the book have you know got better for it i think it's amazing to me to hear that you you actually did your trip after the first two arcs because i'd say one of the most potent things about about that text of blood is, is the uh your marriage of words and pictures you get a very strong sense of the locale and the people. I think the characters are supremely vivid, you know, and and, uh, and I think, you know, you're extremely good with a sense of location, actually, Jake. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, I mean, I, I've I've noticed that I've noticed this about your artwork, your your family's artwork in the past. You know, the the sense of place is is really really important, really strong. And those colours that you do in the reckless books, those blown out, burnt out kind of LA colours, they're they're really evocative. You know, and it's the same with that text. But I get a real sense of you get a real sense of where you are in your book. It's not just nice artwork and comic book visuals it's a through a sense of being transported so i would have expected to say oh you know after after the first three or four issues i went over to texas and soaked it up so you know it's amazing how evocative your sense of location is uh well, given the you. fact that you did it let you know you did it late in that journey yeah than. yeah yeah well yeah i mean that's I, I appreciate that it's you know but that that's the kind of stuff like character stuff and location and like all that sort of stuff is the stuff that I enjoy doing yeah. like you know the action and stuff I I can take it or leave it in terms of actually sitting down and drawing it obviously like I like to read it but yeah doing like <laughs> the act- fun with issue yeah. two eventual game yeah. um but even but even in the action bits it's like it's the it's the character stuff that I think pulls you through it more than anything like that's the stuff that you know you want to connect to it you don't just want to you know it's not a fast and furious film or whatever it's like yeah. you want to the characters are the thing that pull you through the story so it's i think that's like the key all that stuff is is like the key to doing it well or at least yeah. i hope so anyway i i think that's 1000 percent true i mean as somebody's read comics all my life which is a long time you know the thing that you remember about the comics you love the most is exactly that it is the sense of character the sense of narrative you know comic book action is it's kind of necessary to the art form and when it's well done that's great but it's not whatever sticks in my mind as somebody who's 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 savored a ton of comics and i, I think those those characters that you've created chris i, I was interested in whether you, you know, you're actually, you were a transplanted Texas family or something, because it, it just feels so real when you read it on the page. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of what I do is I just observe. I, I talk to people, I observe, I listen to them. And then when I write a script, I, I'll read the dialogue out loud. Um, and that's something that I've always done and I, I, I do now. And it's, if it doesn't sound real when I'm, when I'm saying it, then I, I need to rewrite it because I, I need it to feel real because I, you know, that a, that's something that we we've been bringing to the table and I don't want to stop bringing that to the table, but I, I think that that, you know, it lends a, a, an authenticity to what we're doing, which I think we need. 
um, especially, you know, again, writing something set in Texas, which is, um, you know, people are very uh, defensive of, of Texas. I mean, we have a lot of Texas readers, yeah. um, a lot of Texas readers. In fact, it, after the first issue came out, we got a state trooper who emailed us and said that this is exactly my life, which that's wow. too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but it was just, you know, to know that we have a lot of Texas readers and, and, you know, we might get things wrong here and there, but the fact that they feel like that's their world that we're bringing to them, uh, you know, that just speaks to what, you know, what we're doing is working. And so I don't want to break that. And, you know, um, so yeah, it, it just, a lot of it is just observing and talking to people and, and getting to know people and, you know, just doing a lot of research and, and the research is, you know, sometimes it's literally just talking to, to people that you meet. Um, it's not, you know, it's not all just reading books or watching movies, documentaries, whatever. A lot of times it is just talking to people and getting to know people and, you know, those people find a way into your book sometimes. So. Yeah, I, I I think the end result for both of you is that you produce something that feels very authentic. I mean, it has a sense of propulsive vividity to it to me, but it has the the, the authenticity of it. I think is what really makes the book sort of stand you know stand out, and I'm I'm sure is the the reason for its success and the reason why it sticks in people's minds. You know, I, 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 one thing I've noticed with uh, with the Forbidden Planet customer base is that uh, that Texas Blood is one of those. Uh, frequently recommended pieces of work that mm. people say, well, I haven't traditionally read comics, but this friend of mine recommended that I read that Texas blood, you know, and it's somebody who might be into crime fiction or whatever. We edit a bunch of crime fiction at Titan. And uh, I think that's the trick. If you're being like recommended outside of that kind of self-feeding comic book continuum, which is so often dominated by what the big two do. And that's, you know, that's a legitimacy to that's all good stuff. But to, to, I think what you're doing, it, it's it's like it's drama in it in it's in a in a pure form. You know, it's not totally generic superheroics. It, it feels very authentic, as I say. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, that where we yeah we're tr we're trying to have it be authentic, but yeah, it's just I I think what Jake does really well, um, and I think that the re this is one of the big reasons that our book is is successful. And what we're trying to do is that he's really good at doing the acting, you know, um, I, I can give him, you know, the, the blueprint, but he's really good at, at getting these emotions in, into faces yeah. And, yeah. and eyes and, and with the body language of, of people. And he's, he's so good at doing that. So I think that that's something that people respond to. Um, and yeah, I, you know, my girlfriend doesn't read comics, but she, she always says that to me about our book that, you know, she can sit down and read our book, you know, whereas she can pick up a flash book and go, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, right. Of course. You know? Yeah. But she could pick up our book and understand it and read it and, and really, you know, get into it. Um, and, I, you know, if, you know, if that's the case with, with her, who's never really read a comic in, in her life. I mean, that's, you know, that's definitely a good I we need more gateway comics for people. You know, I agree. This is, you know, this is something that, you know, when people say that I, I really relish that because i think that that's something that we need uh, you know uh, I, I you know it's it's more people need to be reading comics because i you know they're an important jake was um talking to somebody about a year ago i think and they asked him what he did for a living and he said uh, you know i'm a comic artist and i remember the response which was oh they still make those <laughs> Yeah, that was you know, wild. And, <laughs> and that, that that's it, it's obviously you know we laugh but it's also it's it's mind-boggling to think that you know all of these marvel movies dc movies invincible on on amazon prime that people don't know that where they come from which is this you know this sort of boiled down essence of, of everything that we have today in our popular culture comes from comic books um you know it's 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 this distilled form of of what the movies are you know and i to to think that people don't know the comics are out there and that they exist and that you can read them and enjoy them um and have them not be just you know for kids or whatever people assume that they are um 
you know, a book like ours uh, might help people find comics and, and really enjoy comics and, and yeah. find them to be a medium that's that's worthy and valid. Yeah, I, th I think that's very well said. G guys, where did your partnership come from? How did it incept? What, what was the deal there? Well, um, I was looking for a, a pretty face. No, <laughs> of course. Uh, no, I, I, I was looking for, uh, I was doing, a, I was trying to do a short film, which would become the first issue of that Texas Blood. And uh, I was reading Killer Be Killed, and Jake was doing the backups for that. Yeah. Um, they were like film essays uh, written by somebody they, else. In they were great. Yeah, they were really good. They were great. Um, and he would do the artwork that would accompany that essay. And I thought that the, the artwork that he was doing would be fantastic for concept art. So I reached out to him. I didn't offer much money, but I said, hey, I feel like the script maybe you want to do it. And he responded and he loved, loved the script and the, the rest is history. We've been working together technically since 2017. So amazing. I mean, I, I, that, what, a, what a great what a great story, though. And for that to be to, to have had the ride you've had thus far. I mean, you know, uh, you, I mean, you've made that opportunity happen with the quality of the work you've delivered, but that must feel great that you're able to kind of do it on your own terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm doing more work with other publishers now, and and I definitely, it, it's become very clear to me how fortunate we are uh, to be able to do what we do and how we do it. Um, as Jake knows today, today I've been talking about. Uh, some publishers that I'm sort of butting heads with right now and it's just it's you know part of it is that I got spoiled you know at, right out the gate um, but another part of it is just that you know we're able to do something that's special and that publishers recognize as being special and yet you know they're not necessarily willing to do what it is <laughs> that we do which is sort of confounding because you know what we do is you know that's what they hire us for yeah. um but i don't know <laughs> yeah i think we i think we looked out pretty early on really i think in terms of who we got to work with with each other and also the publisher and and the response to the book and like everything is just like we were very lucky i think to start the way we have um so yeah i think to go in elsewhere or whatever you start to realize like oh no this is uh, we've got it pretty good here <laughs> yeah well it's it's one of those things where it's like we don't know what it would have been like if, it, if we didn't come out during the pandemic you know we, we don't know what it would have been like because we came out in june 2020 we were supposed to come out in may 2020 yeah. we were taken off the schedule we were put back in june 2020 so you know what would the response have been if there was no break in distribution would we have still been popular or would we not have been popular you know it's like there's so many quite you know what what if comic shops were not open, were open or you know because it's like you know everybody was doing like drive up orders and things like that you know they'd stick the cash out the window they'd give you books <laughs> it's like a drug deal i mean that's what it was like at the you know during the pandemic during quarantine um so yeah there's a lot of questions that I, i've you know just like thought about myself like would we have been what we are now in a different circumstance but you know at the same time there's no, no real point thinking about that, worrying about that but i i am curious to know but yeah it's we're definitely fortunate to to be where we are and and how we are pardon my dog hey, no, that, that, that's a, the best kind of interruption um <laughs> <laughs> Jake, how do you how do you, what's the secret to your massive productivity? Because I mean, you, you're illustrating the, that Texas Blood universe, you're illustrating Newburn, you're doing all that coloring work on you know your dad and Ed's books, which is fantastic, by the way. Okay. I mean, as you know, I was speaking to them the other day about Night Fever, and uh, they couldn't have been more comp Ed couldn't have been more complimentary about uh, the, the, what your coloring brings to those books. But it, that's it, from the outside, it looks like it's a superhuman workload to me. Um, yeah, it's pretty stressful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, you know, it's, I am like, fortunately, I'm just quite quick as well. You know, yeah. like, I can, I can color like 10, I, I colored eight pages today before coming on this and I, I did 10 pages yesterday. Um, so once I sit down and do it, I can just sort of do it. Um, especially the color and stuff. What, but 
yeah, like the, the other stuff. Well, we take six months off between each arc of both, like Newburn and Texas Blood, where I sort of get I can ca- catch up a bit, and it didn't actually work that well with Enfield this time because I I don't know what I was doing, but I I just didn't realize that I had a, like a month ago I was like, oh, I need to draw an entire issue of Enfield in the next month. Um, I thought I had like six months. And then those six months disappeared and I hadn't drawn anything. So I've been trying to do that. Yeah. Cut. And then my deadline for Enfield is the same week as my Enfield, as my deadline for my dad's book, new book. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, trying to juggle it all at the moment. But, you know, like, just when the deadlines are there, you just have to work over the weekend. Like, that's pretty much it. Like, yeah. you know, just, and I've got, um, two weeks or so until my deadlines and I'll be working every day until it's done um and that's pretty much all there is to it and then I'm like I'm working on a graphic novel as well uh but luckily that's got a much longer deadline so it's sort of like do 10 pages every month or whatever or and try and fit it in between doing things but it's I mean, it is a lot. I miss a lot of deadlines, especially like self-imposed deadlines. Where I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do this then, and then a week later, I'm like, oh, I didn't do it. Um, so it's mostly just like, what's the next deadline? I need to hit that, and then I'll worry about the other, other things. So it's it's just a, a juggling act, really, like keeping all the plates spinning. That's what amazes me about creators like yourselves, in the sense that you've got to be. Um self-regulating right in terms of your your deadlines and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and you it, it to have the kind of careers you guys have got it takes a, a massive work ethic because you know i as somebody who's always worked for companies doing what i do your deadlines are imposed upon you you know and, I, mm-hmm. and it's like pretty much you have somebody shouting at you going you know you've got to give me this you've got to give me that but with you know with you guys it's a much more internal process to a degree it's and my, i don't uh, know if i was sat in my own studio yeah. I think, yeah. How do you, I mean, how, how you manage it, uh, I've, I think it's supremely impressive. Yeah, it's the, it's the bank account that shouts you instead, saying, if you don't yeah. do it, you don't get paid. <laughs> um, that's the, like, you know, like a lot of it is just like, well, I said I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. I think it's just like, if you don't do it, you don't get a book out. And then it's, then what you're doing. So it's, um, it, yeah, you, you sort of don't have a choice. Like, we got to choose pretty much when Enfield launched. Um, but then, like, the actual deadlines are down to the printers and to Image, and, you know, they're telling me, if you don't get it done by then, your book's not out. So they're like, okay, well, I've got to get it done. And then I've got my dad texting me, like, you, you've already done 10 pages. What are you doing? <laughs> like, Ed's worrying. <laughs> um, because, I, cause, yeah, I, especially with those books, I leave them until... The very last minute. So I started working on this on this new book. The new book goes to the printers in two weeks, and I started working on it two weeks ago. So I gave I gave myself about a month to color. I think it's one hundred and thirty pages, whilst also drawing twenty five page issue of Enfield. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, like I, I I really do leave it to the last minute, and then I like. You know, when I when I've got longer deadlines, I've got people like, come on, uh, like you haven't sent anything for a while. Like, yeah, yeah, but I'll get it done, just in six months' time when the deadline is. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> um, so it's just like yeah, trying to trying to keep it all going and like doing like a little bit just to like you know make your editor happy or whatever. Just like here's here's three pages. I'll I'll be back in two weeks with three more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, thanks so much for it. That's very interesting stuff. And thanks for your candor about the process and about uh, the inspiration of it. Um, what, what have you guys, uh, what are you guys working? Have you work, got stuff you're working on beyond the Enfield gang? Is there anything you can talk about? It's all right uh, if you can't, if it's still a secret, but I presume you've got projects on on the horizon. Well, we have that Harley Quinn um, black oh, yeah, white my, writer. That yeah. looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean the cover is amazing. I I had no idea they had Cliff Chang on the on the on the cover, and it's, no, it looks fantastic. So um, I know our story looks good too. <laughs> so that's good. I haven't seen the other stories, but 
Uh, yeah, really I'm... excited about that one. Uh, we yeah, were able to play with the uh, the classic uh, Paul Dini, Bruce Tim story, Mad Love. Oh, oh brilliant! But, yeah, you know, great. Um, so that was fun. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a good one. I'm I'm working on what am I working on? Well, I've got yeah, so I've got the I'm working on the new book of my dad's, yeah. which comes out in I guess in in the winter. Night Fever's just come out. So is that where the body was that you're doing at yes. the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm about halfway through that. I think I've just hit page 60 today, yeah. um, which is pretty fun. It's like it's a completely different vibe to Night Fever in terms of the colours because everything's in the middle of summer in the daytime, which is quite the contrast to uh, all the nighttime stuff in Night Fever. Yeah. So um, that's pretty fun. So I'm working on that. I've got uh, a graphic novel coming out with um, uh, Francis Ford Coppola for his... That, that's no amazing. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, your no, yeah, your dad whatever. mentioned this the other day and I was like, wow, man. Yeah, how so did, how did that, that come about? How did that come about, Jay? Um Chris Ryle, the editor, um, yeah, okay. just emailed me and he said, oh, I've got this project and I thought you might be quite cool for it. I can't tell you who it is, but they're like an award-winning director. I think I just like message Chris, like, who could it be? You know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's got a quite a long deadline and it pays well. So I was like, okay, I'm interested. Um, and then he told me who it was, and I was like, okay, I'm interested. It's amazing. Um, yeah, that was just like for the longest time, I was like, he must be confused, like he must have the wrong Phillips or something. You know, like there's no way they want me for this um because it's such a it's it's like it's not like anything i've ever done before either like in terms of the the setting and the and the story um so it's it's a great cha- great challenge and i'm doing um i'm like doing watercolor wash on the artwork and stuff so i'm trying something new with it um so yeah that's great fun um so yeah, I'm very slowly working on that. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it done. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. And how about yourself, Chris? Uh, I have things cooking at several other publishers, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just slow going. You know, it's it's just a long process. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I I don't want to talk about anything yet specifically, but course, yeah. you know, there's there's definitely some some stuff coming up that I'm really excited about. Um, some stuff with Jake as well. Um, we've got, we've got uh, two or three things aside from Texas blood coming out. Um, one of those things is Harley Quinn, but we have a few other things we're doing together. So, and one of them is just in pitch form right now. So hopefully fingers crossed, we get the approval for it. Um, Cause that would be really cool to actually, uh, to actually get to do that one. So oh, that, that, that is great. Uh, and uh, long may your partnership continue. Um, Everybody who's been watching this, uh, the, uh, the, the books that we've been talking about can be ordered from the links attached to this conversation. And uh, thanks for coming in and spending the time and being so candid with me, guys. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Thanks, thanks for having us. All a pleasure to have you on. And uh, I very much look forward to, uh, to digging into the book myself. I've only seen the previews thus far, so my treat on the horizon is to actually read it. So, uh, <laughs> so and, and, uh, and I'll look forward to whatever you guys do next, and I look forward to having you back on to discuss whatever they may be. So, uh, again, thanks. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.